On today's show, we deep dive into large-scale 3D printing, individual custom 3D printing your clothes, and heading to the VR zone that Bandai Namco has going on in Japan. Then we throw our own lasso of truth around one of the internet's wonder women, Rylea Vanderbilt stops by and talks to us about being a superhero. We're also not sure if you knew this, but they're now giving away college scholarships for esports. So oh, we're gonna man. Be, we're going to be discussing that too. It's tomorrow daily. <laughs> citizens of the internet, welcome. Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm Ashley Skeller. And I'm Jeff Kanata. Guess what we did today? We uh, bought something that we don't know what it is yet. We bought something <laughs> we're not going to get for two years and that we've never seen before. We're, are we, is this dumb? Are we dumb? It's a little bit, yeah, it's a little dumb. But you know what? We are enthusiasts, and so I think that reserving a Model 3 is a step forward into the future even though we're going to have to wait for the actual future to get it. Yeah, uh, Ash and I both stood in line at Tesla and uh, threw down our, our hard-earned dollars to uh, reserve a space rain. in line for a car that we don't know what it is until later on tonight. Maybe yeah. by the time you're watching this, you already know whether that was uh, yeah. fortune or folly on and our you, part. Please yell at the screen right now and tell us if it was worth it or not. The good news is you can always cancel your pre-order. refundable, yeah. That's so okay. that's why I did it. Important. I figured... Uh, if I hate it... I can I always get my money back. Give me my money back and yeah. I'll find something else. All right, you ready to talk about some headlines? Let's do it. Let's do it. So our first story this week was Project Escher. So yeah. Autodesk, over on Monday, we talked about Autodesk making this insane array of 3D printers that could print items of very large scale all at once. Yeah, the idea here is uh, divide and conquer, right? Split up the job and have multiple 3D printers printing at the same time, and then you create large sections of a big thing that can then be put together to make the big thing and not have to print it all in one long session. Right, and so this is really exciting, and a lot of people, uh, we had some, I gotta say you guys, you, you had some really good, we had some really good user feedback on this. Awesome. Um, so yeah, Project Escher, you can see there's all these different 3D printers that are working together, and they all work in a giant array. They have a neural network that they all talk to each other. Uh, the job gets split up into slices. So if you imagine a 3D model and then you slice it up just like a bread, yeah. and then each 3D printer handles that slice, and at the end, it is one cohesive piece. It's not like, oh, I got to put all this together. It's, or you it's could have awesome. it make separate pieces, which is pretty cool. Yeah, look at that. Like, see, you can see the color-coded sections that each printer is, is, is divvied up. Right. And I, I, the way I imagine this is it's basically the assembly line of the future. Instead of assembling anything, it literally is fabricating it. Right. It's a fabrication line. Which is pretty cool. Like, I think this is a huge deal for future and also rapid prototyping. I mean, this is a thing that uh, a lot of companies have a lot of trouble with is is yeah. rapid prototyping at that scale is really difficult. And so when you have something like this, like Project Escher, companies are going to be able to rapid prototype these really large ideas and things and put them into testing a lot quicker and a lot easier. Um, and I think that's the thing that really makes it so important, which is really, really fun. Yeah, and, and the, the, the trick here, the real special part, is the thing I kind of didn't understand when we first talked about it this, this week is uh, there, it's seamless, right? It, the, the magic is in handing off the, the job between multiple printers, but making everything seamless. Making one piece. Right. right. Um, and I think ultimately as this stuff gets better and better and it reduces the time that it takes to print large things, it's just going to become the obvious choice right. to use this technology to make something because it'll be quicker, it'll be more efficient, right. it'll be easier to do because you won't have to have an assembly line. You just make the thing. You just make the thing. And and so you guys had some really good user feedback on this, like I mentioned. Scrappy DP said, uh, how about we do something like print shelter for the shelter list with that 3D printing array? That it's is a great idea. pretty cool. I mean, and, and if you think about it, if you have a 3D printing array and you have, say, uh, walls, you can print them much faster. I believe it was 80 to 90% quicker than a standard, uh, when the I believe the blade they were printing, they said this is like 90% faster right. than what we would normal be, normally be able to print this at. The question there would be, of course, what are the costs of production? If you can lower the cost to a point where the, the raw materials, the raw plastics or whatever you're mm -hmm. printing are inexpensive enough, you could really use this for, for a lot of good in the world. And I think that's yeah. pretty cool. And also, I mean, if you think about biodegradable material, mm -hmm. like you could really get into biodegradable 
uh, filling. Uh, it, you could really, really make a difference in terms of, you know, eco-friendly housing, eco-friendly uh, prototyping, eco-friendly. I mean, these are things that don't have to be trashed right. once they're, if they say, oh, this doesn't work, then okay, well, we'll just melt it all down, start all over. And, and the question cool. here too is, as we'll begin to see over time, Will the fact that things aren't made of multiple parts mean that they'll last longer? Well, I mean, the or downside. Last time. That's the question, right? Because the downside of that is if one bit breaks, the whole thing's broken. Right. But maybe point. because there's fewer moving parts and fewer things to to be incorrectly put to, together. Right. Then maybe that's the thing. It, it will last longer. But I don't know. It remains to be seen. Only it's a it's a whole new uh, whole new world. I just saw that. Um, that uh, architecture is moving moving this direction and that adhesives are more powerful now than actually bolting something together. Uh, glues, we've gotten to the point where glues are more powerful than than actual like nuts and bolts. I can't wait to glue Pretty my cool. fingers together at some because I have <laughs> well, done that been, on many you've been, occasions. You've been nut and bolting your fingers together for it's so true. long. It's true, yeah, I really have. And it's just it's not the same. <laughs> it's not, it's not the same. It's not as good anymore. Um, and then uh, Chuck really quickly also wrote, uh, the 3D printer ray could be used for other things too, like home manufacturing. So I think a lot of you guys really thought big on this one and went for housing, which yeah. is a brilliant idea. So, um, okay, so from large-scale 3D printing to individual 3D printing, let's talk about the pedals dress. This is the kinematic pedals dress from uh, Nervous System. Look how beautiful that is. It is really stunning. And I have to say, um, I talked to them a little bit after we published our episode a couple days ago and said, you know, I just wish it was a little I bit cheaper. I want to wear one. I, yeah, I was like, I, I want one really badly. I wish I could afford it because they start at $6,000, which is, you know, I just I just spent all my money on a Tesla. Like, <laughs> I don't have any more money for this. Uh, but, yeah, I, I really love this idea of designed by you to fit your body and style. And so I want to explain a little bit about the website because this is the this is the really cool thing. So when you go through this website, you set up exactly what you look like, what your body looks like, and then you go into the dress design. And as you adjust the dress to make it literally customize exactly the way you want it, neckline, shoulders, skirt style, like the whole thing, you can also adjust the structure of the actual 3D printed pieces and as you design to your, it will literally design to your body to make the best fit possible. And also to move correctly, right? right? To, to move, move properly. how you would want to move. Exactly right. And so there's different uh, types of connectors. So these are the pedals uh, that look like they are actual flower pedals. And then there are other ones that are triangles. They have different, a bunch of different shapes. Uh, but yeah, that's, this that's I gorgeous. thought was the really cool thing about this and, and talking about future fashion and how how so many things, like, can you imagine going on to Amazon and saying, well, I really want a new dress for uh, this wedding I'm going to. I'm a guest at a wedding. Well, I'm just going to design my dress, and it's going to be custom fit, and it's going to come to me in six weeks, and then and, and I'm going to wear it. It's going to be great. It's pretty cool. And I'll have it in not even six weeks. Maybe it less. looks like this dress would be loud. It's Yeah, it does seem like it would be it would, You know, loud. clickety-clackety. Clickety-clackety. All not the time. loud in the way that, you know, bright colors are loud. loud in the but way. like, you know, you see somebody in a sequins dress, and you That's can hear true. it kind of flowing as they walk yeah. so it's sort of a similar concept i want very badly to uh have you be able to, to test drive one of these things let me tell you i there is nothing i would like more than to just wear 3d printed clothes all the time <laughs> like i am super into this idea as a futuristic fashion thing i think it will open the doors to structures and silhouettes that we've never seen before and that were not previously possible and we've yeah, already seen sure. a little bit of that and also when you combine 3D printing with technology like LED and battery, I mean, the, really, the sky is the limit. It's, it's, it's an endless ocean of possibility in terms of fashion, and that makes me really excited because I love fashion. Well, that means that I will never see you again. You are literally would just be constantly designing. Just always designing my clothes. Where's Ashley? Well, she's, she's I designing I got to design my her... shirt for the show today. <laughs> Every day I have to sit down for an hour and like design talk the clothes about, that I want to wear. Talk about a rabbit hole that you will go That down. would be a certain certain rabbit hole that I would <laughs> never come out of. It would be an abyss that would be very hard to get out of. But, but Spike Tiger makes a very interesting point. He wrote in and said, Hey TD, hope your body shape never changes for that $6,000 garment. Perhaps the multi 3D right. printer could make a shirt and pants. <laughs> Uh, That's a great point. You great gotta... point. You can't gain or lose any weight ever. And once you buy that $6,000 dress, yeah. like, oh boy, you better find somebody with those exact measurements if you ever want to resell it. Yeah, but I mean, people buy clothes now that are very expensive and the same thing applies. That's very it's true. It's not anything That's new here. True. I mean, it's more precise, I'm guessing, but... Uh... Sample size, like, yeah. Yeah. 
Yikes. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's, that's good why point. I don't spend six grand on any clothes. <laughs> yeah, try not to try not to do that. But because I think over eat. time, over time, I think <laughs> it'll come down in price and it'll be really affordable. And again, uh, this whole idea of like design the clothes and then send it to, uh, you know, Forever 21 or whatever. Right. right? Or, you know, a, a, where do you shop for clothes? I don't know. The internet. Like the Old Navy, like you send your me. stuff like to the Gap or whatever, and then it's like it prints for you and you go pick it up. Like that's, I think, yeah. the thing. All right, so last thing, and then we will take a break and talk to, and then come back with Riley. Let's talk about VR Zone because this is really, we need this in our lives. 100% we need this in our lives. Well, I mean, we talk about the possibilities of VR, and I think that this is an example of a company trying to explore that. You know, we talk about sure. it as ways to be more empathetic. We talk about ways to face your own fears. We talk about all these psychological effects that, that VR can have. And here is an example of it in, in action. Yeah, I love this idea of giving people an opportunity. And I, this is the thing that really I, is my favorite part about this VR zone is that they're adding these real life elements yeah. to make it feel as real and immersive as possible. So you'll actually be on a little board a few inches above the ground as you're rescuing this cat on a plank, which... And they like, put a little cat! They put a real cat there, you gotta grab the cat. Uh, so they have Vive, which is pretty cool. But yeah, yeah that's oh, the view, that. and I, mm -mm, no thank you. Well, at GDC, I did I did The Walk, which is based on the film of the guy, you know, oh, no, uh, no. Uh, Petit walking between the Twin Towers yeah. in the 70s. And so they built a VR version of that moment, and they put, smartly, they put a, an extension cord on the ground so your feet feel what it's like to sort of to be, be on, on a rope. To be on the cable, ooh. Uh, and I, those little bits of tactile sensation go such a long way in selling it's the true. feeling. It's true. It's yeah. so true. It's like going to 4D movies. Like when people go, oh, yeah. that was really neat that like I watched, you know, Pirates 4D or whatever out here. Yeah. It's like, oh, I got splashed in the face of the water when the pirates showed up. Like, <laughs> totally. Cool. And who would have thought the company responsible for uh, Dragon Ball Z would be at I, the forefront yeah, of... Yeah, wow. Bon Bandai Namco. Yeah. I was, that was not the company that I was expecting to see do that. I mean, I don't... It's cool. Yeah, and I mean, we have stuff like this coming up uh, that's, that is that is about to open that I'm sure we'll be covering quite a bit on tomorrow daily and also just CNET in general. Um, the uh, the VR uh, the Roller void coaster? the void yeah oh, so the void, the yeah. void. we have the VR the sort location. of location location based yeah. environmental VR experiences where they have these games that you're going to be able to play with other people and stuff that's cool and then like you said we have VR roller coasters I mean you're really going to see VR now that it's commercial integrated so far into what we do like it's I was thinking yeah. about the other day, so we used to have land cafes. For all of you young children out there watching the show who are under the age of 30, yeah. you probably don't remember what a land cafe is, but, or if you live in another part of the world, they might still be around. Uh, land cafes, I used to go in high school and play Diablo 2 with my <laughs> best friend Juan, uh, all the time at this land cafe that was local, I and mean, you pay for your time or whatever, and then there's like I think those are still big in Korea, right? I think so. I think there's the still there's places in the world where internet cafes are still sort of a big thing. But I think the next big thing is VR cafes, where you're gonna go and you do things like this, where yeah. you rent a little room and you can have your like cool VR experiences or whatever. It's Dave and Buster's, right? It's, yeah. it's that idea of going and having the experience that you can't have in, at, at home. At home. Uh, I think that's going to be huge and. Uh, we were joking today, I was talking to somebody about stuff like this, and we were joking about how it'll be somebody's job at those places to just be like, I'm Gary, I'm your force feedback. Yeah. And so you're in the just VR, and he's just like touching you at the right <laughs> moments, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, when you lean against a table, he has to like hurriedly run over hold there a, and hold you up. Hold a piece of wood underneath <laughs> yeah. you to make it seem like you're on it. That would be, wow, what a great... Look, yeah. we're creating jobs with virtual reality. There you go. Uh, you guys had some interesting things to say about VR, but not specifically VR Zone. Uh, Kyle wrote in and said, I don't know why, Jeff, you haven't gotten Oculus. said, I have mine. Maybe they don't want people at CNET to review it. Wow, Kyle. Thanks for rubbing it in. Every day, I'm clicking refresh on my emails, waiting to find out when my pre-order ships. He's really upset about it. There is a thing on Reddit. Somebody created a way. I did this last night, by the way. Of course you uh, did. You you go into Chrome and you can like edit the web page of your order and find out the exact minute that you that you uh, pre-ordered. Your pre-order went through. And then like extrapolate. Yeah, and they have this massive wow. graph on Reddit of like all the people that have done that and when their pre-orders are. Sh it's like that's what Reddit's good for. Why is honestly it, Oculus just giving genius. us that info? That's should, true. Why are they not more transparent about that? <sighs> I just don't know. tell us. I don't know. It'll make the waiting easier if I know, oh, okay, well, it's a, I'm a month away or a week away or whatever. Just, yeah. be, Just say, be communicative. Here's the shipping window. You little... You have my money! What is that? That they I, do. I threw my money at Tesla. I threw my money at... I'm just... I don't... 
I shouldn't just be paying. Throwing your money all over the place. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna even feed myself at this point. I'm just gonna be waiting. Do for you have any money arrive. left to feed yourself? No, I don't of think course you're I don't. Have to eat that Oculus when it shows up. All right, we're gonna take a quick break and find some more stuff for Jeff to throw his money at. <laughs> and when we come back, we're gonna talk to member of Team Unicorn, a a Wonder Woman from the internet who is as good as any, I would argue. Indeed. As good as the best of them, cream of the crop. Riley of Vanderbilt will be with us. So don't click away. It's tomorrow daily. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Our guest today is a very delightful lady. She has played Wonder Woman in the Rainfall Films short film. She is a member of Team Unicorn. <laughs> she also has a science show that she created she's going to tell us all about. Right, Leah Vanderbilt, thanks for being here. Thank you guys for Yay. having me. Yeah. I'm so glad that you decided to come swing by our studio. Yeah. I've been trying of to get course. you're busy. Yeah. Well, yes, I have like... 12 different jobs. So yeah. hey, that's <laughs> it's good. hard to get out of the the, uh, the office. I don't really have an office. I mean, I go places and do things. So. The office is always with you. Yeah, I'm be, my, it's my in your heart. It's been in your heart. <laughs> right here. This yeah. is my office. That's your yeah. office. So yeah. let's talk about, let's just get this right out of the gate. Let's talk about Comic Con HQ because this is a yeah. really big deal. And yes. you are executive producing, have created a science show. Yep. That is going to be on Comic Con HQ. Yeah, it's uh, so uh, Comic Con International decided to team up with Lionsgate and create kind of a uh, subscription-based video on demand, you know, channel. And that's kind of the way that all our entertainment is going these days. Sure. So they're kind of jumping on that bandwagon, but hopefully doing it before a lot of people do it and better. Um, but we're really excited. Uh, all the all the content is really curated for the Comic Con crowd, and it's really exciting for me because as a lover of science, they uh, they were super enthusiastic about the uh, the idea that I had, and they're like, "Let's make a show!" And so I'm making a show. Well, can you tell us what the idea is? So I. I love science, Me and too. everybody loves science. I mean, you should love science. <laughs> if right. you're watching this show, you I you hope so. Are, Definitely, I love hope so. I mean, it's it, because there's science based in everything. I mean, this is the way when we're kids, you know, we want to discover things, we want to find out about things, how things work, um, and I've always loved that. But I noticed over the last couple of years that there has been kind of a void when it comes to current scientific news. Like we have a news show for sports, uh, politics entertainment, but we have nothing actually discussing current scientific discoveries and anything in STEM fields, and STEM fields is science, technology, uh, engineering, and math. Right. So uh, so for me, I was like, well, this kind of seems weird why we don't have this thing, yet science is all around us. It's what makes the world work, and it's very interesting. Um, so I was like, why don't we do a science show that is based off of current science? Uh, discoveries and stuff that people don't necessarily know is happening and kind of put that in the spotlight. I yeah. love it. Yeah, so yeah we love explaining it. Explaining sort of the cutting edge of science, what we're, you know, what we're discovering now and, mm -hmm. uh, and what it means, like giving yeah. context of like, and making it very, it seems like you guys really want to make this content um, not, not unlike what we do here on yeah. Tomorrow Daily, like very edible for people. Absolutely. Very understandable, like, and have fun while you're doing it. Like there's some great science shows out there. Uh, you know, you have How the Universe Works or like, Through the Wormhole, which I love that show. show yeah. But it, that show is on a level that <laughs> even sometimes I can't understand some of the concepts that they have. I'm just like, uh, sure. And with this, STEM, there's some really big concepts. Like, it, science right. can be an extremely overwhelming thing. It can be. I mean, there's a lot that's involved in it. So we, we definitely want to kind of make science cool which it already is cool, but yeah. we kind of want to bring that up and, uh, yeah, and get people really interested in science again. And awesome. that's kind of And what better way thing. to do that than with somebody who's played Wonder Woman? <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that experience. Oh, well, that experience was kind of the best. I, <laughs> I, my mom will tell you, since I was a little girl, Wonder Woman was always my favorite, and I kept saying, one day I'll be Wonder Woman. So to actually have it happen, even though it was couple years ago now it was pretty it was pretty surreal I well, guess I saw you mention online that someone actually commented about it a few days ago they were like oh I thought I thought that one a couple years ago with, with yeah. Riley was better that like, was really funny well th with the new movie coming out Batman and Superman there's a Wonder Woman cameo with Gal Gadot and 
Yeah, I was overhearing uh, two nerds talking about the movie and talking about Wonder Woman and how cool it was. And then they were like, well, that's pretty good. But there's this thing online a couple years ago. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this yes. is so crazy. That's when you have to go, it was me. Like, you know, I was thinking about <laughs> Funny that. Funny story, guys. But then I was like, you know, this is like a secret identity moment. That's true, yeah. yeah. So I was like, so I now you have the anything. full Wonder Woman experience. Yeah. Like not just Wonder Woman, <laughs> yeah. you also got the, the Miss the yeah. Prince experience. Right, yeah. 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 You had Diana Prince experience where you can hear what people's thoughts on you were. <laughs> it was a little odd. It was a little weird. I, that's never happened to me before. But it was, it was so much fun doing that. Um, and just how motivated I was to work out. Because when I heard I got sure, it, yeah. I was just like, oh, when are we shooting this? And they're like, 12 weeks. I was like, oh, so I have like 10, 11 weeks to actually get into shape. And Cut to the montage. Yeah, and that's, that's yeah, exactly yeah, what yeah, happened, yeah, actually. The Rocky montage yeah. view. I did up a, those stairs, man. Yeah, I did a, uh, I actually did a fitness blog during that time, so it keep me accountable. But sure. I was working out, I think I was working out like six days a week, doing cardio five of those days, and then just weight training, Sweet. and then just eating like right food, getting rid of sugar and salt, and drinking tons of water, and... So you went through Ugh. a little bit of what the the actors in these new superhero movies do because yep. they really sacrifice their bodies for these films. It's the I, new uh, it's the new superhero diet. All you gotta yeah. do is step one, get cast as a superhero. Yep. Step two, uh, do the diet. Do the, superhero yeah, just, diet. Just do whatever. It takes. I feel like they have a, a hard. Like obviously they're going through the work, but they also they have a team. Have a team. They have a nutritionist and they have, you know, right. how many, you know, workout buddies. And, and also a lot of pressure and millions of dollars riding on them, which yeah. would terrify me into eating whatever someone told me to eat. <laughs> like, I just feel like I will just tell me. Just what give to it do. to me. Just like, I don't want to mess this yeah. up. That's me. I mean, as long as you send it to me and it's there and I just put it in the microwave or the oven, Good. I'll just eat whatever you put in front of me. I don't know, man. I was reading about Hugh Jackman's routine for Wolverine <sighs> and no. he, like, he has to eat every two hours. Yeah, he has to. And they wake like him must. up to eat. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy The Rock, town. too. Like, there was a guy oh, on Reddit who did the about Rock's this. diet, yeah. and he, he went through he it for a rock. month. No, he, it, but he, he lost a lot of weight, and he did a really good job, and The Rock actually acknowledged him on wow. social media and was like, great job, guy. Like, good. Yeah, you know, I actually, on my phone, and it's still set there, even though I haven't, like, actually done it but i have six meals a day plus three snacks oh. so and my phone will ding when i'm supposed to eat so wow. like 7 a.m first meal 9 a.m second meal 11 wow. o'clock third meal i then, do that but it's all like donuts and then <laughs> i know it's all it's the, the content of the meals is the problem for us and then the, like, and the exercising part too we have to work off all those i uh, don't see why that's necessary calories, <laughs> i don't see why that's a necessary <laughs> thing uh one of the other things that you do that i think is really cool uh, we were talking about fashion earlier but uh, uh, Team Unicorn, you guys do a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. Uh, you guys had a music video. You had all about that bass. We had a couple music videos, actually. We started, Team Unicorn started as a parody geek girl band, like the Spice Girls. Uh, and we just thought we were going to do, we did uh, Geek and Gamer Girls, like Katy Perry's California Girls. Mm -hmm. And we thought it would just be a one-off, you know, whatever, just having fun. And then and it, it actually... blew up. Yeah, it turned into something. And this was back in the day where, I mean, this is six years ago so the geek girl thing i mean even though it shouldn't have been a thing it was a thing still so sure. people really responded to it and uh yeah it just we were just like well i guess we have something special we should continue to go on with it so we've done three music videos and then some like straight up parodies of other things too so yeah. but then you guys are also moving into stuff like clothing design yeah um, you, have some, you have some really uh <laughs> for those of you who have not who are not following riley on instagram oh. first of all go do that and secondly, um, you guys posted a picture of these really rad, throwback, retro-looking Star Trek bathing suits that were probably my favorite thing ever in the whole universe. <laughs> I'll make sure you get one. <laughs> Just don't yeah. get the red one because you'll like. No, I don't want a red. I don't want a red suit. Uh, yeah. I don't want to be a red suit. I don't yeah, want to be a red suit. No, <laughs> I mean I get I'll it. give that to my sister. I get it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so again, I think we're really good at seeing where there's holes in, in pop culture, like what needs to be filled in. And uh, we noticed that as far as like geek girl fashion is concerned, uh, a lot of that's getting filled now. But the one thing that we were looking at was, you know, swimwear and how no one really makes like nerdy swimwear. Mm. And if you do find it, it's like the $20 super cheap stuff you wear 
two times and mm -hmm. then and it falls apart. It falls apart. Sure. Uh, sure, you find this uh, very fascinating. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, like, oh, I've just been looking for the right bikini for finally, years. Finally, we're having this conversation. I know. I mean, it's a really, it seems like a really important conversation. What were you going to, You, I think you were going to ask. Well, I, we were talking earlier this episode before you got uh -huh. here about uh, 3D printed fashion, which oh, is sort of yes. becoming a thing. There's this rose petal dress that sort of hit the internet. I don't know if mm. you saw anything about it, but what do you think about the idea of uh, 3D printing to your exact specifications and making the exact dress that you want. I love that. Yeah. Uh, kind of scratches both those itches, right, of the, the geeky thing of, like, fiddling around to make it just right. And right. Then... I mean, I think um, there's a lot of movies, uh, a lot of uh, costume designers on movies that have been doing that, I think even since, like, Tron, like sure. the Tron mm -hmm. movie, where, you know, they digitally capture the actor's body. To create. And then to create around that. So it's basically just perfect measurements. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of the way things are going to go, especially when 3D printers get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, which they have been. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you'll see a lot more 3D printed fa uh, fashion. So, sure. so in terms of, um, aside from 3D printing and fashion, mm -hmm. uh, because you're doing a science show, I have to ask, like, what to you is the most exciting uh, thing about in science right now like oh. to you what's the thing that really grabs you as a person well personally I've always been drawn to anything space related uh, since I was a little girl if I wasn't gonna go into acting I think I probably would have gone into astronomy or something to do with that uh, so there's there's a lot of amazing um, concepts in like astro uh, um, physics and one of the biggest things that has happened uh, lately is they have um, they have figured out oh, what's it called oh they have proven um, uh, gravitational waves yeah, yeah which we, is had a super a, we had a LIGO thing. team member come on and talk oh, did about you? that with us yeah oh, it was fascinating and yeah. it, it's a great example of what we were talking about of something that's kind of hard to wrap your head around and it's great to have a way a show like what you're talking about kind of break it down and understand why yeah. that's a big deal because it's like, who cares what's happening out, you know. So far away, right. Yeah. And then it's also so infinitesimal when it finally reaches us. Yeah. Right? It's so hard to understand, like, what does that mean? It has huge mean? ramifications. Right. Yeah. yeah, and that was like one of the examples we were using as we were talking about the show and stuff and being like, oh, if the show was happening now, this is something that we would talk about currently as it was happening and try to explain in a way that the normal you and me type of people would be able to understand. Yeah. So yeah. through demonstrations or whatever. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. It's like a like a modern sort of Mr. Wizard. That's what I, I used to like love that, that show. You guys are you're not even old enough to remember Mr. Wizard. <laughs> I remember Mr. Wizard. Obviously she does. She does. She does. <laughs> we watched it. So I'm it's old, okay. it's my birthday today. I just went one one year older. My hardware is upgrading right now as we <laughs> speak. You're downloading my internal right now. hardware is upgrading. Uh, okay, so let's talk about uh, let's wrap this up and then we'll we'll but where is so people are going to be able to go to Comic Con International to see to check out HQ. When is this launching? So uh, the beta launch is in May. First of May, I had that. I had <laughs> sounds really confident. You sound yeah, really no, confident. no. I just had that thing. I was like, when did they want my show ready by? <laughs> May, May seventh. Um, I think they're going to okay, do May a 7th. soft launch on May seventh. Um, right now, the beta is free. Okay. Uh, so it's... you can try it before you buy it. Uh -huh. cool. It's uh, it's going to be free for two months, maybe three months. I might. Awesome. I think it's enough time to figure out I mean, if, if you, you like it really or not. like it. Yeah. yeah, and especially, I mean, it'll be free during Comic Con. Yeah, and that's a big thing because a, big a lot of people, you know, there's so many people that go to Comic Con, but there's a lot of people that can't go. Right. Sure, and it's really hard to get into the panels you want to see, even if you go. It's yeah. like Hall try H, even if you. Hall H seats 6,000 people. If you have never been to Comic Con, it's 6,000 people. It's like a small stadium. And people still don't get it. Well, not That's even Hall H, anything at this point. It. Yeah, and any you have panel, to pick yeah. and choose what you can't see everything because no. you have to stand in line. You, you know, have to choose what, what panel you want to sit in. One what? panel a day. Yeah. Like, that's pretty much what you're going to get into. Yeah, it's uh, it's really, really frustrating for a lot of people. And what this channel is going to allow for is that you are going to kind of get a front seat to all that stuff. So they're going to be, st like, live streaming all the Hall H panels. Uh, they'll be behind the scenes Finally. stuff. Finally. So it's, yeah. It's gonna, yeah, it's going to be like, you know, you can sit at home and watch whatever. And be at Comic-Con. Yeah. And maybe yeah. not be part of the hundred and... 80,000 people, like people that are yeah. part of San Diego. You don't have to smell Comic-Con. You can just yeah, see Yeah, you can just you can experience it without the smells. Sometimes yeah. fewer senses are better. Yeah. Uh, so, true. do you know the name of your show yet? 
Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> we're working on names right now, okay. actually. Okay. I've got like eight of them out there, but marketing is trying to figure out which one's the best. All right, so. well, we'll keep. You gotta we'll, lock down all those social media accounts. We'll That's know right. your oh, yeah. name. We'll know your name. We'll keep yes. an eye out for yeah, that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Where can everybody follow you so that when it gets announced, they can then go follow the name of the show? Uh, right now on Twitter, you can follow me at my first name, Rylea, and then on um, my website is RyleaVanderbilt.com. Super easy. Very yeah. cool. Thanks for being here. We yeah, appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having me, guys. It was delightful. Yeah. Make sure you guys check out Comic Con HQ. Like she said, May 7th. It's going to be in beta. You're going to get free free trial. Yeah. Do and it. Then, good. And then you can decide <laughs> if you want to throw your money at it. Like Jeff throws money at everything. Oh, God. What? I, I, it's not a good idea. Just throws money at free everything. Free stuff's better. Uh, <laughs> we got more free show coming at you right after this, yes. so stick around. Welcome back to the show. Thank she was a truly wonderful woman. She's very wonderful. Yeah. Someone say she's a wonder woman. <laughs> she's great. No, thank you again to Rylea Vanderbilt. Um, make sure you guys seriously just go follow her on social media because actually Good stuff. puts up a lot of great tweets and also you're going to want to know about Comic-Con HQ. Um, you know, we, we've we been having this habit of skipping back at her Hackett. Have for, we? for some interesting conversations. Like we did yeah. the VR uh, comparisons. We did right. a few different things. Today, you found a story that I think is worth conversa conversation. Uh, or lifestyle change complete uh, and complete new realignment of priorities. It's a pretty big deal. <laughs> so here is the story. Uh, this ran, it was, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but apparently UC Irvine. University of California this is a publicly funded school. Yeah. Publicly big, funded big, school. Big school. Big school. They announced this week that it will become the first public university to launch an esports scholarship program yeah. starting in the fall of this year. You get paid to go to school. Well, not paid to go to school, but your school gets paid for because you play League of Legends. Because you play League for specifically for League of Legends. So Riot Games really got out ahead of this and made some great deals. As they should. I think this is a I think this is a cool thing. Now you... I can understand some people hearing this and being skeptical and thinking, is this the thing we want to sort of promote in a college atmosphere? I say but yes. I say, I yes, say yes, too. Yes. And I say yes mostly because I think culturally we've sort of just accepted that collegiate sports are worthwhile. Sure. And no one would question somebody getting a baseball scholarship or a basketball scholarship or a football scholarship. Or even a kickball scholarship. Right, or tennis, or... Volleyball. Yeah, right, racquetball, whatever. There are a myriad ways in which uh, collegiate athletics help people go to school. There's also even academic scholarships, so you don't right. even have to play sports to get a scholarship to go to a college. And we all think that the reason, and we all agree that the reason that this is a good thing is because it enriches the college experience by having all, a, a diversity of, of uh, endeavors for the student body, sure. right? Having a healthy... Uh, uh, sports area, having a healthy academic area, filling out the college with well-rounded kids. Right, so that everybody gets an experience that helps them become better people. Right, and helps the college uh, overall have, you know, so you go there and you have all these different things that are available to you. Sure. I think this is another thing that is part of, all, part of our culture more and more, and as esports becomes a more lucrative professional endeavor, mm -hmm. You want to have people prepared for it at a, on a younger level. Now, the weird thing is, by the time you get to college, you're almost too old to you're, compete. You're kind of too old. It's it's <laughs> almost like gymnastics, where it's like once you hit like 16, they're like, oh, you're retired now. Yeah. So that's the only that's the only downside. But but you're 18 when you go into college. If you go in right after high school, so you're 18 yeah. years old. Uh, you really love legal legends. Say, let's say you're in high school right now. Let's say you're 16, 15 years old. You're watching the show. Uh, if you really love League of Legends, you might be able to get a full scholarship to a university. And that is an incredible thing in and of itself. Yeah, That's it really is. Thing. It really is a cool thing. I mean, I, it changes the whole conversation about whether uh, video games are s sort of a waste of time. I think it, we, I think we've moved beyond that. I think that. we've gotten past that because yeah. of coding and apps and developer. I mean, there's so many avenues that video games can lead you to in terms of a career path. I think we're, I think we're beyond that now. Yeah. Do you, uh, I gotta ask you this, it felt a little shady that they chose University of California Irvine specifically because that is legitimately Blizzard's backyard. 
Uh, oh, you think it was like a sort of a just throwing like, some shade at Blizzard? I think it was maybe just like, oh, <laughs> like that's an extra bonus for Riot to be like, this is in Blizzard's backyard. <laughs> that's interesting. Like, I don't know if there's anything, you know, actually I'm there, sure but... somebody is excited about how shady that seems. Yeah. Well, I heard about one on, there's one on the uh, East Coast that was kind of talking about this too. And I think this is sort of yeah. going to be a domino effect that's going to permeate more and more, more and more schools. My question is, are there going to be, I mean, we already see something like, are you talking about Blizzard does Heroes of the Dorm, which is right. a college Win level. tuition. Yeah. Well, it's a college level aimed at that age group. Are we going to see college teams? Because if you're getting a scholarship to come to our school and play League of Legends, it would make more sense if the school had, had a, League a, league. Of Le- League of Legends team. Yeah. a League of its own, might you say. <laughs> yeah. um, also, for old people as a reference. Uh, so, yeah, I think that you're absolutely right. There's going to have to be leagues. I think we're going to start seeing collegiate gaming leagues pop up, collegiate esports leagues. And then I also think we're going to see high school leagues. I yeah. think in a couple of years, we're going to start seeing... Like the Pop Warner of maybe esports? It's, maybe it's not specifically sanctioned by the high school, but you're going to see those sort of ASO for soccer yeah. and yeah, Pop Warner for football, like where you don't have to go to a specific school. It's just regional sort of leagues and teams and stuff like that, which we already kind of see in like land, again, like land cafes or tournaments, things like that. You actually have people who are set teams and they go and they travel and they play, you know, maybe for a little cash or whatever. But that's the one thing that you really have to worry about is then you start getting into, well, does esports fall into NCAA rules? Is this going right. to be part Can of the NCAA? Money? Can a player earn money? Can a player have sponsorships? Like, these are things that are changing, I think, very rapidly in the industry. And there's been a lot of talk about, you know, college football, for example. Right. There are so there's so much money made off those players, right. and they don't make any money, and they're not allowed to. Right. And it's really hard for them because they have to pay for their housing. They have to pay. I mean, there's a lot of things that they don't get covered right. by their scholarships, and you know, these players want compensation. Well, I mean, I think that the idea here would be: is there going to be a college level? Uh, league that isn't professional because I think that's the difference right is uh, in the in the sort of athletic realm uh, the difference is these NCAA rules say right. we're not a professional you're amateurs league. you're amateurs yeah so right now I, I imagine you go you get a scholarship you compete in League of Legends tournaments that are still for money they're you... still professional right so um, it's 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 gonna be interesting to see how this all evolves and changes but, but I I like it because it continues to legitimize video games as as a as a worthwhile activity. Yeah. But also, as these esports become more more of the regular sport culture gets transitioned over to esports, I think it makes everything bigger and better and more fun. Sure, I agree. I yeah. mean, any competition, any anything in terms of like competition, and I mean that in the sense of oh, well, you're going to start a scholarship program? Well, so are we. And then you're going to have a league? Well, so are we. Like, any of that is just good for gamers. Like, there's no... And also for fans. Like, there's no way that doesn't end well... That doesn't not end well for everybody. Like, it's a thing where everyone can enjoy it. It's only going to get better, more sophisticated, uh, bigger, bolder, you know, louder. I mean, I'm going to Heroes of the Dorm next weekend to cover it, uh, which you can watch on social media, by the way. And uh, I'm going to that, and it's now at... A sports venue. Right. It is at a you know where I believe the Sounders the, play, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. And it's like they're playing at a huge venue. This is a big deal. Like they've really expanded this competition. So same thing, like same type of concept. I mean, as we we're kind of marching towards what South Korea already has, which is uh, professional gamers as rock stars. Like these yeah. these guys are just worshipped. And so I think we're going to start seeing the same type of uh, you know e athlete worship. Uh, soon enough. I mean, we already saw it a little bit at the StarCraft Finals. Yeah, and I think that, you know, what most people don't understand about this is the the difference between an esports player and a regular gamer is as big a gap as the difference between mm-hmm. a, you know, a top draft pick in the, for the NFL coming out of college and a, a guy who plays football. On the weekends on the in weekends. the park, yeah. It really is deal. that skill gap, yeah. that amount uh, of difference. Time. In, Effort, yeah. training, I mean, this is a really big deal. Yeah. It's and not the kind of thing you can just sort of, well, maybe I'll go to school and get a scholarship in esports. Yeah, you know, you, no. It's a lifelong it's a dedication. Yeah. yeah, it's a dedication. Just like you would dedicate your entire high school career to playing a sport to get a scholarship. And maybe even before you start high school, you, you've already been playing that sport. Same yeah. type of thing. Uh, so that is our conversation about esports. 
We would love your feedback. I would love to know if you would, you know, if you would uh, want to have gotten or are thinking of maybe getting or uh, it's something that would inspire you to play more video games. If you could get a full scholarship to college, what game would it be for? That's what I want to know. There you go. What are you so good at that you think you could get a scholarship to college for? Oh, That's man. my question. Are they throwing out, uh, are they throwing out spl- Splatoon? Splatoon. I mean, I'd go for Splatoon. I'd be yeah. a team captain, all-American Splatoon <laughs> player. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That's fighting really Splatooners. Good. You'd be a Heroes of the Storm player. Maybe. I can't hang with those guys. I wish I could. I mean, mine, mine legitimately, you can look at professionals. I mean, I guess there's a professional Splatooners too, but I, I wish I could rank high enough to, to play with the pros. For play with the big heroes. dogs. I know. I, I aspire know. to it. I aspire to the really good people in Splatoon, too. Yeah. Um, all right, so that is our discussion. Let's talk about what we're into. Uh, it's it's a my birthday today. Yes, <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a my birthday. And I was really excited because Nintendo gave me a great gift. <laughs> and they gave it to everybody else. Mitomo is out today. And finally, Nintendo is getting into mobile with a super weird kind of social network. I, by the way, this <laughs> this promotional video is is perfectly just, insane. Yeah, it's absolute like, insane. Spot on. It is absolute. This is an exact representation of what this game is. <laughs> Sitting on top of a chihuahua in a photo. Uh, you make your little me. You make your me. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm just gonna open. I'm gonna open the app. That's Uh-oh. what I'm gonna do. Now the. The whole show is going downhill now. It's all going down. App. I'm opening up the Mitomo app. Um, yeah. So basically, you have your little your little me. You make your me, and you can make answers. Uh, you can see it right now. Here is my. <coughs> excuse me. Here is my amazing. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it, but basically, this is. Uh, oh look! You have a little hat on. Yeah, I've got. Oh, I got a whole costume. I bought a oh. whole. I bought a whole little outfit. Oh good! Um, did you buy? Did you spend real human money for that? No, no, they give you coins. So, okay. th- but that's a nice thing. There's no in-app purchases. So oh really? So there's nope. Is there's it, does the app cost money? Nope, it's free. So what? Is it ads in there? Nope. But what here's am I, the thing. What am I not getting about this? It's there's, promoting Nintendo. That's the a, thing. Like they want bi- people talking about, and you have to have you can do your Nintendo ID to sign up, and then you can connect to Twitter, and so people can just start t- sort of talking about I'm Nintendo. I'm skeptical. You can get a Mar- I have a Mario hat. Like you can get little costumes. There's there are games. Uh, there's these I'm little tickets. About this. There might be I, like I haven't seen an in-app purchase section, but I, there might be one for these little game tickets because they have yeah. these sort of carnival-esque games where you drop a me into like a machine and then it sort of bobbles or it's really weird. Anytime you see multiple currencies in a game, chances are one of them t- is tied to human money. It is very strange, uh, but you get. I haven't seen any, and I I keep. Just getting coin, like it's really easy to get coins and stuff. So it's really fun. It's super weird. I- I'm not gonna lie, it's not for everybody. But well, that's what's good about it, right? Is the weirdness. But that's the best part about it. Is it's so bizarre. You just answer questions and like your friends come to your apartment and talk to you and tell you answers about stuff. It is very strange. But huh. I am enjoying it so far. It's super weird. If you follow me on Twitter, uh, let me know if you're in Mitomo. That that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Hey, uh, my into it today. You kind of spoiled. My Intuit is your birthday. Oh, you're into my birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Ashley. Oh, uh, Logan you guys and made I. a graphic and everything. Yeah, we did. Uh, Logan and I are, um, you know, we. What is happening nothing. right now? We're just, this is your card. Oh, you, uh, got you can your open card that later. Everything. Uh, we just wanted to celebrate you because you are the heart and soul of the show. And uh, you make everything work so fun. And you're so fun to work with. And it's your birthday. And uh, there's nothing I'm more into right now today. Then my awesome co-host I'm celebrating being rad. You celebrated my birthday by buying yourself a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> what a great! Isn't that the? There's gift. nothing more appropriate. That's very true. You could all make like me and pre-order yourself a Tesla today for my birthday. Like, that's, that's what you could <laughs> do. It's just going so to make random. You happier. Yeah, just go get so, in the line. Go get a real yeah, everybody, long line. Everybody, you know, take a second. Maybe use that hashtag #HeyTD to. Uh, Wish old Ashley a a big happy birthday. Here's my birthday wish. If you want to do something for my birthday, say something nice to a stranger. That's my do do or say Aww. something nice to somebody you have never met in your life. That's always the best gift you can give is the gift of kindness. I think what you're saying is be good humans. I think that's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, but before we before we officially do that, we have to see our phone photographer of the day. Our phone photographer of the day today is Kyle. Kyle? Kyle, we're watching you. Kyle took this picture. 
on his Moto G3, and he wrote mm. to us and said, Hey guys, love the show. Took this image with my Motorola G3 in February at my park in Larne. Thought it might be good for the show, and yes, I totally give permission for you to use it. His park? What does that mean? His Like the park he goes to, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm going to guess he owns it. I Let's just say Kyle owns Kyle's his park. park. That is his park. It I is called the Kyle Park. He gave us permission to use the photo, but did he give us permission to go swimming in his park? Because I want to do that. That looks like a nice... Well, I don't know. Look, there's a lot of the three sort of smokestacks back <laughs> there. I get a little a... nervous about what's inside that Kyle, lake. Kyle, what are you doing to your park? Yeah, what's in that body bar? Maybe he owns the factory that's at the <laughs> end of this, uh, at the end of the thing. No, I always find these pictures so fascinating because there's always these little details that I catch and I'm like, I wonder what the story is with that. Yeah. There's And there's a sign right here. It's, yeah. There's all kinds of stuff happening in this picture that I think it looks simple at first, but then when you really get into it, you could probably come up with a good story. I wish Kyle would let us know what he does down in his park. Like, does he go fishing? Yeah, it looks you like a good fishing hole. Fish? Do you hike? Or yeah. do you kayak? Maybe kayak. Kyle Kyle. Oh, Kyle? No, that's, that's file was, that. I you can file have, that away. Never have said that. Um, yeah, no, we want to know. And if you guys want to send in your phone photography, you should. The that's email why, yeah. is tomorrow at CNET.com. But that's why you should always include a little story about your photo. Uh, we love knowing what, what, why you took that picture. Yeah. Also, tell us what device you took it on and give us permission to use it like Kyle did. Yeah. And if you don't know, make something up. Like make tell us we a, don't fic know. a fictional story. We're not we're not saying it has to be a nonfiction story. Maybe that's like, what we should turn photographer into. Just fake stories. It's just we see a picture and then we invent a narrative around it. Listen, I do that sometimes <laughs> on this show. Like I just come up with stuff. I like that idea. Uh, so I'm gonna guess that was a robot factory that we Kyle's robot factory. That was Kyle's robot factory. Makes underwater submarine robots. Indeed, indeed. Uh, that is it for the show. You can find us on social media. We will be back next week with a, a brand new docket of weird, wonderful science fact meetings science fiction both of us in fact have our shirts on right side forward today which right by the out. way why would anybody do that because uh, you know weird. you gotta live outside the shirt that's what i say oh, boy. Like happy fun. birthday ashley oh, thank you be good humans guys bye